How would you like to live in a house that you custom design and build in less than a day? That is going to be a reality sooner than what you think. We're here today at the AIM conference, and our guest is Barack Kushnevis, the director of CRAFT, the Center for Rapid Automated Fabrication Technologies on the campus of USC. And Mr. Kushnevis, you just delivered some fascinating remarks about contour crafting, which I think is going to be very transformative. But for our guests who may not be familiar with it, what is contour crafting? Uh, yes, contour crafting is 3D printing at large scale. Uh, it builds the structures very fast compared to the existing 3D printing methods. It does so uh, by building uh, with thicker layers, much thicker layers. The conventional 3D printing uh, uses sub-millimeter mm -hmm. layer heights. In contour crafting, uh, the layer heights are multi-centimeters typically. You, you made the kind of a joke, but pointing out that layered manufacturing is not a new technology in construction. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, while uh, in manufacturing we have uh, just started experiencing layer-wise fabrication through the process called 3D printing, in construction we've been doing that for thousands of years. You know, bricklaying is a way of building buildings layer by layer. Uh, so the only field in which 3D printing uh, concept has actually been tested and tested extensively and exhaustively is construction. Now, some of the things that you discussed, you were showing um, some computer models, some animation of construction of a home. Right. And what is the size, at least for your models, of the size of home you could build, and what would be the time frame that these machines could conceivably finish that home? Right. So we have a plan of development uh, of these machines in my company, newly established company called Contour Crafting Corporation. Um, and the entry level machines will build uh, homes that are about 1,000 square foot per floor in one or two stories. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, but, but we progressively increase the size of the machines and, uh, and the buildings that can, they can build. Uh, the speed of uh, fabrication or construction uh, will be about uh, one house uh, in a day. That's, that's our target uh, for um, a, an average size home, like 2,500 square foot home. It will take about 20 hours to build the home. For the smaller ones, of course, it will be much faster. And that's everything. That's, you've allowed for electricity, you've allowed for plumbing, you've completed a home in 24 hours. Exactly. Well, uh, there is a lot that goes into a home besides uh, just the uh, basic structure and uh, plumbing and electrical networks. Uh, you have the finish work, you have um, tiling, you have uh, cabinetry in the kitchen, for example, uh, kitchen counter, and then I hope I mean, uh, you have uh, home appliances, including, uh, uh, you know, the, the bathtub and uh, yeah. other stuff, and then, of course, the faucet and uh, electrical receptacles, and a lot of these other things that have to be added. These are not a part of our automation plan. Now, the, the renderings and animation that you used in your uh, discussion showed essentially a, a machine on two tracks running right. over the building with the, the, uh, the application coming from overhead. What, are you, what do you see on the horizon for larger buildings, taller buildings, and how would these machines then keep up if, if a building wanted to go 10 stories high or 8 stories right. high? So uh, we have developed a conceptual framework for uh, structure climbing machines. So uh, the difference between uh, buildings and, and other stuff that robots produce uh, is that in case of buildings, uh, the product is a very stable platform itself that the robot can ride on. Uh, so consequently, uh, we can envision ways in which uh, the, the, the robotic system uh, uses the building and climbs on it and after finishing one story builds the second one and third one and so on. So practically there will be no 
limit on how high the buildings can be using this technology. Now, some of the markets, obviously, um, we can see a day when, when every house is 3D built, perhaps, but in the short term, are there specific markets, whether it is um, developing nations or nations that have been hit by natural disasters? What would you see as a short-term market for this? Very good question. I think the most immediate one may be uh, emergency shelters. Uh, a lot of people ask me, who wants a house in a day? And my response to them is that a lot of people lose their houses in a few seconds. And definitely those people want their house <laughs> in a day. And this technology is able to respond to that need, which is a very dire need. Uh, every year, about 40 million people are uprooted due to war and natural disaster. And we really don't have a good way of addressing uh, this uh, uh, situation. Um, people typically have to live in tents for a significant period of time very bad conditions. Uh, imagine if there's a cold winter or a hot summer, what happens in tents. Um, and, uh, and these are the people who have already been subject, uh, have been victims of, uh, of trauma. And then you put them in, in, in that kind of uh, uh, very substandard condition. And uh, it's really my uh, inspiration, I mean, aspiration to uh, change that, help change that situation and kind of immediately, more immediately respond to the need of those very deserving people. There's an application that you are working on with NASA, yes. I believe also. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, uh, so uh, one uh, thing that grabbed my attention when I was l looking at the possibilities that uh, such a technology could offer was the ability to build in remote locations, the ability to build autonomously in, in uh, harsh conditions like in the polar regions uh, where it's very cold, construction is very difficult, um, but also on other planets. Uh, so I did some study of what has been proposed so far for building on moon, especially and I noticed that uh, predominantly uh, the proposals are based on taking construction material from here to there and building with those. You know, some of those are like uh, inflatables and stuff like that, mm -hmm. which cannot be very permanent, cannot last very long, especially in the intense radiation situation that is out there. So then I thought, well, a technology like contour crafting would be ideal if we could use the local material, in situ material. So I started thinking about how it can be done. I did some study of the uh, material uh, on, on Moon and Mars, and uh, based on those, I did a few experiments. And uh, I noticed that it is possible to use uh, those materials without water and uh, uh, in, implementing our technology, we could build uh, a functionally acceptable structure. So on the basis of that, I wrote the proposal to NASA. And luckily, uh, they funded my first project. Uh, performance was uh, satisfactory. They uh, supported the second phase of the project. And um, in the third phase, uh, NASA was uh, excited and supportive enough to uh, create, create to support a much bigger project uh, that involves a uh, few NASA centers as well as uh, my company. Well, it's fascinating. The entire technology, it's, it's rare to be around something that is truly transformative as mm -hmm. your Thank product you. seems to be. So we appreciate you being here with us at AIM Conference. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Here at the AIM Conference for IMTS-TV, I'm Bill Herman.